The Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft are among the most iconic tools ever sent into the cosmos. Launched from Earth, they traveled far across our solar system and eventually pierced through into interstellar space, a place no man-made object had ever reached before. But something strange happened near the boundary of our solar system, something scientists hadn't anticipated. And now, Voyager 1 is transmitting data that has experts scratching their heads. What exactly did Voyager uncover at the edge of the solar system? And what's going on with the strange signals from Voyager 1? Let's break it down. There's something truly awe-inspiring about uncovering mysteries that lie beyond the edges of our familiar planetary neighborhood. While recent marvels like the James Webb Space Telescope steal the spotlight today, it's important to recognize the space probes that paved the way, especially the Voyagers. In many ways, Voyager 1 was the James Webb of its era, giving us our very first close-up look at the outer planets and their moons, and sending back discoveries that changed how we understand our cosmic surroundings. The two probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, are twins. They were launched just under two weeks apart in 1977 from Cape Canaveral, and together cost around $900 million to develop and deploy. Their initial goal was to study Jupiter and Saturn, including their complex systems of moons and rings. NASA expected the mission to last just five years, but to everyone's amazement, both spacecraft have far exceeded that projection. More than four decades later, they're still operational and transmitting data, and can even receive instructions from Earth. That longevity has turned the Voyager mission into the longest-running space mission in history and one of its most successful. The Voyagers have journeyed past the gas giants, gathering valuable scientific data along the way. They've offered insights into planets, moons, and other celestial features we barely understood before their visit. All the information they send is picked up using a massive array of antennas across the globe known as NASA's Deep Space Network. These large radio telescopes are positioned in strategic locations around the world and are used to track and communicate with spacecraft across the solar system and beyond. By 1989, Voyager 2 had already passed Neptune, traveling over 3.4 billion kilometers, an incredible feat for a spacecraft that was launched in the 1970s. One key factor in their success was timing. The missions launched during a rare planetary alignment, something that only happens roughly every 176 years. This alignment allowed the spacecraft to take advantage of gravitational assists, essentially slingshotting from one planet to the next with minimal energy expenditure. This rare window is what enabled the Voyagers to visit multiple planets efficiently and continue their missions into interstellar space. One might wonder how these probes have survived the harsh conditions of space for nearly 50 years. The answer lies in their durable design. Each probe is built around a central bus measuring about 1.5 feet tall and 6 feet wide, with a large dish antenna 12 feet across and an 8-foot long boom that holds many of the scientific instruments. They were equipped with wide and narrow angle cameras, radio equipment for analyzing atmospheres and gravity, and spectrometers to measure things like temperature and radiation. Each Voyager weighs around 773 kilograms, with about 105 kilograms allocated for scientific gear alone. For navigation, the spacecraft used stabilized guidance systems, along with gyroscopes and accelerometers, to ensure their high-gain antennas remained locked on Earth critical for maintaining communication over such vast distances. Perhaps most remarkably, the computer system that runs the Voyagers has been functioning continuously since the 70s. The Onboard Computer Command System, or CCS, is responsible for processing instructions, supporting systems like the Flight Data Subsystem and Attitude and Articulation Control System work together to operate the spacecraft's instruments and maintain orientation. Even today, the Voyagers are still traveling, now tens of billions of kilometers away from home. They're so distant that even if we developed a spacecraft that could travel at the speed of light, we still couldn't reach them in any reasonable time frame. 
Their survival is largely due to their power sources. Radioisotope Thermoelectric Generators, RTGs. These convert heat from decaying plutonium-238 into electricity, which powers the probes and keeps their instruments running. But energy alone isn't what's kept them going. The Voyagers were also designed to withstand the unknown. They're shielded against radiation and temperature extremes, a feature that has proven crucial as they move deeper into the interstellar medium. Interstellar space is radically different from the solar system. It contains low-density clouds of charged particles, interstellar wind, cosmic rays, and trace elements like hydrogen, oxygen, and helium. These components behave very differently compared to what we see inside our solar system. Solar wind, the constant stream of charged particles from the sun, eventually fades out as it collides with the interstellar environment. This creates a transition zone where things get strange. This area at the very fringe of the solar system is where the Voyagers discovered something unexpected, a superheated region that scientists now refer to as the termination shock, a boundary where solar winds slow down and pile up, creating what seems like a glowing wall of fire. It may sound like science fiction, but it's very real. This is the region where solar particles are compressed as they encounter the interstellar medium, producing an area of extremely high temperatures. Voyager 1 measured plasma in this zone at an astonishing 50,000 Kelvin. In this zone, the sun's magnetic field behaves erratically, twisting and intensifying in ways we don't fully understand. Without proper shielding, the probes would have been incinerated just crossing this zone. Fortunately, NASA had the foresight to include multi-layer insulation, heat shields, and thermal protection. Even so, there's still a lot we don't know about this mysterious boundary. Could it grow or shift over time? Could it one day pose a danger to future manned interstellar missions? Some researchers believe there might be gaps or less intense regions in this barrier, which could provide safe passage for spacecraft. But until more is understood, the termination shock remains one of the most dangerous frontiers we've discovered. The Voyagers are still pushing forward into the unknown. One day they'll pass through the vast Oort cloud, a shell of icy debris that surrounds the solar system. A journey that will take another 20,000 years. Eventually their power supplies will run out. By the 2030s, both probes will likely fall silent. But even then, their legacy and the famous golden records they carry, will live on. These records, encoded with sounds, images, and greetings in dozens of languages, are our message in a bottle to the universe. Built to last billions of years, the golden records may still be readable long after Earth as we know it has changed. In that sense, the Voyagers are more than spacecraft. They are timeless relics of human civilization, floating quietly in the darkness between stars. So as we await the next leap in human exploration, we owe a debt to the Voyagers, our first ambassadors to the deep unknown. What Voyager discovered beyond the edge of our solar system, that so-called wall of fire at the edge of the solar system, might sound like a problem for space travel, but it's actually a protective shield. Known as the heliosphere, this bubble of charged particles created by the sun acts like a cosmic force field, shielding us from about 70% of the harmful radiation drifting in from deep space. Without it, Earth would be far more vulnerable to cosmic rays and energetic particles. But Voyager 1 and 2 didn't stop at the wall. They pushed onward, moving past the termination shock, through the turbulent region known as the heliosheath, and finally into the heliopause, the true boundary where our solar system's influence gives way to the vastness of interstellar space. The heliopause marks the standoff point between solar wind and the interstellar medium, a delicate balance where particles from both realms meet, change course, and form a sort of cosmic frontier. And while scientists had modeled what this boundary might look like, the reality, as revealed by Voyager, turned out to be far more chaotic. Still, the probes were built tough. Despite crossing a volatile zone full of magnetic turbulence, they held together and made it through. Voyager 1 officially entered interstellar space 
on July 25, 2012, moving at a blistering pace of about 540 million kilometers per year. Interestingly, although Voyager 1 was launched after Voyager 2, September 5, 1977 versus August 20, 1977, it quickly overtook its sibling and became the first to cross into interstellar territory. Along the way, Voyager 1 made some fascinating discoveries, including the heliospheric current sheet. Think of it as ripples on a pond, but instead of water, it's magnetic fields twisting through space created by the sun's rotating magnetic field. These ripples become compressed near the termination shock, forming strange magnetic bubbles that no one expected. Before the Voyagers, scientists believed this boundary zone would be relatively smooth. Instead, they discovered it's messy, unstable, and unpredictable, forcing a total rethinking of what the outer limits of our solar system actually look like. And even though these missions have gone far beyond what they were built for, they can't keep going forever. NASA estimates that the Voyager spacecraft will run out of power by 2025. Over the years, engineers have turned off non-essential systems to conserve energy, including the cameras, which were shut down decades ago. The last image Voyager 1 captured is the now iconic pale blue dot, a distant photo of Earth taken from nearly 7 billion kilometers away. In that image, Earth appears as a tiny speck floating in a beam of sunlight surrounded by darkness, a powerful reminder of our smallness in the universe. There could have been more pictures like it, but saving power has become the top priority. Each remaining instrument is vital offering data from a region of space we've never explored before. And what a journey it has been! Along the way, Voyager 1 discovered active volcanoes on Io, one of Jupiter's moons, a revelation that shocked scientists. Io wasn't just geologically active, it was blasting out charged particles that fed Jupiter's intense magnetic field, making it a literal electrical generator in space. Voyager also helped unravel the mystery of Jupiter's Great Red Spot, a colossal storm that's been raging for centuries. It's so massive and violent that lightning within the storm could be detected by Voyager's instruments. As it moved outward, Voyager 1 turned its attention to Saturn and its most fascinating moon, Titan. Before Voyager, Titan was just a blurry dot, but the probe revealed something extraordinary liquid. Titan is still the only body in space, besides Earth, where stable liquid lakes and seas have been found on the surface, sparking speculation about potential life. Voyager 2 followed, acting as a kind of cosmic relay, building on its twins' discoveries. It spent more time studying Titan's atmosphere, revealing that it was rich in nitrogen, methane, hydrogen, and carbon, ingredients that could potentially support life. Eventually, Voyager 2 also crossed into interstellar space, joining its twin in a journey from which there is no return. Both probes continue to send back astonishing data. Though they launched in different directions, they're each moving at around 38,000 miles per hour and are expected to reach the Oort Cloud, a distant shell of icy objects surrounding the solar system, in about 300 years. That's when things really get interesting. For a long time, scientists believed the heliopause marked the end of the solar system, but they now understand it's just the beginning of the end. The Oort cloud, made up of icy debris and leftover building blocks of planets, is thought to stretch halfway to the nearest star. It holds no planets or black holes, just frozen fragments floating in the dark. Beyond that lies true deep space, a realm of distant stars, exoplanets, and perhaps other civilizations. And if such civilizations exist, NASA made sure to send a message. Each Voyager carries a golden record, a time capsule etched with greetings in 55 languages, a map of our solar system, images of life on Earth, and music ranging from Bach to Chuck Berry. It's a message to the universe. We were here. What if aliens can't understand our languages? NASA added images, math, and diagrams in hopes that intelligent life, wherever it may be, would recognize the intent and possibly respond. So far, though, no contact has been made. 
NASA has repeatedly confirmed that neither probe has encountered alien life, but that hasn't stopped conspiracy theories from flourishing. Some believe strange signals picked up from the edge of the solar system, and more recently from Voyager 1 itself, are signs of alien tampering. When Voyager entered interstellar space, it began detecting odd plasma waves, a natural result of interacting with interstellar gases. But recently, the data from Voyager 1 has gotten even weirder. One of its onboard computers started sending corrupted signals, baffling NASA engineers. According to official statements, this glitch is due to a malfunction in the flight data subsystem and not aliens. Still, some wonder, what caused the failure? Cosmic radiation? A micrometeorite impact? Or something we haven't yet imagined? With the cameras long since turned off, we have no images to confirm anything visually. We're left to decode garbled telemetry from a machine tens of billions of kilometers away. A whisper from the void. Realistically, NASA doubts any alien encounter has occurred. If intelligent life had found the golden record, surely they would have sent some kind of reply, or even tried to come here. But if they did, the journey would take thousands of years, even at incredible speeds. In the end, all we can do is wait. The Voyager probes, now aging pioneers in the dark, continue sending back glimpses of the unknown. And maybe, just maybe, they'll uncover something more than a magnetic wall of fire before their final signals fade. Thanks for watching this deep dive into the Voyager mission. If you're fascinated by space, exploration, and the mysteries beyond the stars, click the video on your screen now to explore even more incredible discoveries.